Today's video is all going to be about AC maintenance or air conditioner maintenance that a homeowner can do themselves. So I sat down and started making a list of things a homeowner can check or do for maintenance on his air conditioner and it turns out that there's actually a lot of things a person can do for AC maintenance. I came up with 15 things. So without further delay, let's just dig right in. Number one, maintenance tip number one is if you cover your air conditioner unit for the winter, either you put a piece of plywood on top of it or you have that wrap where you wrap it all up, make sure you take that off before the AC season starts. There's always a couple calls I get a year where I come out and the whole thing is wrapped up and of course the air conditioner is not working right. So make sure you take it off. And also some frequently asked questions are, you know, should we even wrap it at all? Really, it's up to you. This thing is meant to be outdoors. It's in the rain all the time. So some snow is not gonna hurt it. Cosmetically, it might help it a little bit. Maybe it's not gonna rust as fast. But operationally, really, it has no effect on it at all. Personally, I don't cover my unit for the winter. But keep in mind that if you have icicles that form on top of your air conditioner, then you really should put some kind of a cover over your air conditioner, at least a piece of plywood. Because I have seen air conditioners where a big icicle fell down and just knocked the whole center of the air conditioner right out. That's where the motor is. So the motor was laying on top of the compressor when I found it. And just one downside of wrapping the whole thing, when you wrap it like that, it makes it a really good home for mice and other critters, for insects, to make a cozy little home inside that wrap between the air conditioner, you know, it shields them from all the snow and the wind. So when you wrap it like that, you are inviting critters to come in. That's just another reason why I don't wrap mine, but it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Also, if you turn off your air conditioner circuit breaker for the winter, make sure you turn that back on as well. And maintenance tip number two is cleaning your AC condenser coil. That's the coil that's all around. Mine has a grate over it, but if you look inside, you can see all the fins and there's copper tubing all inside of there just kind of looping back and forth. This condenser unit sucks air in from the sides and then rejects it out through the top. And to put it in simple terms, what it's doing is absorbing the heat from your house and then through the refrigerant or the Freon, brings it outside. And when the air from outside is blowing through those coils, that air absorbs that heat that is taken out of your house and then it rejects it out from the top. But because it's sucking air in through the sides, eventually, these coils will get plugged up with dust, debris, leaves, whatever else is flying around. You know, when you're mowing your lawn and this thing turns on, it sucks in grass, basically any airborne particles. So at the beginning of the summer season, just look over your coil and throughout the summer season as well. If you live in an area like me, my condenser unit is on the side of the house and right over there, we have a big forest, lots of cottonwood trees. So my unit gets plugged up really fast. I have to wash it down a couple times a year. So look over your unit. If it's dirty, then hose it down. Some people say to brush it with a brush. That doesn't work very well. I mean, you can get some of the stuff off, but if you have a grate like mine, your brush isn't gonna do you much good. And I also get asked about chemical cleaner to clean the coil, some foam cleaner. I personally don't really like using that because some of that stuff has some really corrosive chemicals in it and it can corrode the coil on your condenser unit, especially if your fins are made out of aluminum. So I avoid that, but really all it takes is just some water to clean out your condenser coil. The best preferred method is to take the top off of your unit and spray from inside out. I usually spray it just from the outside in and that tends to be sufficient. It's very clean. You can see all the gaps through it. So most of the time it's sufficient to just spray with the water from outside in. And I'll show you how to do it because I know that my unit is pretty dirty from the end of the last season. Okay. So cleaning your coil or washing it down is very simple. All you need is a hose. You don't even need a nozzle. If you have a nozzle, great. Just make sure the pressure is not really high. And by all means, do not use a power washer or a pressure washer because those fins are pretty flexible and if you use a lot of pressure, they will all bend. But just regular water pressure is good. I'll just cover it up with my thumb and just spray down my coil. If you wanna go an extra mile, you can also vacuum it out or blow it out first before you start washing. I'll just wash it for now. See how dirty my coil is? There's a bunch of dust on it right there. There's cottonwood up on top. And it gets a lot worse than this during the year. So I'll just be washing this down. I'll show you this side and I'll kind of fast forward all the other sides. Just so you know, the side towards the house will always be the dirtiest. So let the washing begin.
So that's how the coil looks after it got washed down. As you can see, I missed a couple of spots. It doesn't have to be spot free. As long as the coil can breathe, you got most of it off. This is the fuzzy style. A lot of you will have the radiator style where you have the fins. Those clean off a lot easier than these train style right here. But as you can see, it looks a lot better than it was. And keep in mind that you wanna have the power off when you do this. Remember how I pulled the disconnect? Your circuit breaker's off. And if you want, you can turn the thermostat off as well. When you're washing down your unit, you don't want it to turn on while you're washing it. And another thing that I get asked a lot is the leaves on the bottom of the condenser unit. Is that something bad? Should we clean that out? Does that affect the unit? And the answer is no. If you have this much leaves on the bottom of your unit, that's no big deal. If it's just a couple of leaves, you can just leave them alone. Of course, if you have a stack of leaves on the bottom there that is that big, then you may want to take off the top of your condenser unit and get most of those leaves out of there. And maintenance tip number three is to check if you actually have a mouse nest that was built during the winter and to check your wires for any broken wires, bare wires, or any broken connectors on those wire, the wire connectors. So to do that, first you have to locate your disconnect. This is your electrical disconnect. Usually it'll look like that, either a metal box or a plastic box. If you open it up, most of them will have the pull, pull style plugs. Some of them will actually be a breaker. There's different styles, but most of them are gonna be a plug like this that you just yank out. When you yank this out, that disconnects the power going to your condenser unit, the 240 volts. But just to be safe, I would also turn off the circuit breaker for your air conditioner. And if you have a meter or a voltage pen, double check and make sure you have no voltage going to the unit before you start touching anything inside of the unit. Because electricity, of course, is dangerous and can kill you if you're careless around it. So I disconnected my power and I have verified beforehand that I don't have any power going to it. And this is what you call an electrical whip. If you follow the whip, it goes into the condenser unit where your electrical section is from the unit, where all your electrical components are. So as you can see, mine goes right into here, which means all my electrical stuff is either gonna be right here or right here. In my case, it's right over here behind this panel. So I'll take this door off. And here we have all the electrical components from the unit. This relay right here, it's called a contactor. This is a run capacitor, a dual run capacitor. This is a start capacitor with a relay. Sometimes it's a hard start kit where both of these are in one. And just so you know, not all air conditioner units will have the start capacitor. And some air conditioners will have other components as well, like a fan delay board or a little control board or some other relays that are installed in this section. But basically after you open this up, just look at all the connectors where all the wires go. Make sure nothing is brittle and falling apart. Once in a while, I'll come to a unit, I'll grab a wire and just wiggle it a little bit, and it just falls apart completely. Like the connector just kind of crumbles as I just yank on it a little bit, not a lot of pressure. So just kind of tug on all the wires, take a look at them, examine them. If you do notice some broken connectors, or maybe they're burnt or corroded, what you can do, if you're comfortable with doing that, is just snip that piece off, strip the end of the wire, and put a new connector on there. And if mice were to build a mouse nest, usually it would be in this section right here. So this would be full of leaves and whatever other nesting material they'll bring in here. And a lot of times there'll be a few dead mice already in here. My personal record is I opened up a unit. It was completely full with nesting. I found six baby mice, all of them are alive, and two big mice, which were also alive. Of course, when I took the panel off, they all just kind of scattered. Also, along with the electrical whip, if you look here, usually it'll be right by the whip going in from the 240 volts. You'll also have 24 volts coming in from the house, which will typically be a brown wire like this, which has two more wires inside of it, a white and a red. If you can see right here, I don't know how visible that is in the camera. See how that wire has a bare piece right there? I should actually snip this wire right here, strip it down, and then rewire nut these wires so I don't have that bare spot. Because if this bare spot right here touches anything metal, it'll short out and blow a fuse on my control board in the furnace. So this is the kind of stuff you're looking for when you're looking at these wires, for bare wires or broken connectors. And a lot of times when there's something wrong with this wire, it'll be on the outside actually. So as it runs along the whip, most of the time it'll be zip tied or somehow taped to the electrical whip right here. It just kind of runs along the side of it, goes in here and goes into the house. Sometimes a dog will chew it. I've had customers with weed whackers accidentally 
chop them off. And of course, weather conditions, eventually the insulation will get a little bit brittle and start to fall apart. So as you're looking at all the wiring, make sure you take a look at that thermostat wiring going from the house to the condenser unit as well. And maintenance tip number four is to check your dual run capacitor, which is usually going to be a silver cylinder like this. It'll have a rating on it. I'm not going to take mine out, but I believe mine was a 40 by 5 microfarad capacitor. The most common AC problem, I have a video called Top 10 AC Problems. This is the reigning champion. He won first place by a landslide. So the most common air conditioning problem is a bad capacitor or a weak capacitor. So if you have a multimeter, check your capacitor at the beginning of the year because they are not eternal parts. They are pretty cheap components and they do fail often. I don't really want to get into the capacitor, how to read the labels and how to replace it and stuff, but I do have a whole separate video called AC not turning on, the most common fix. In that video, I talk all about the capacitor and I show you how to replace it there. So if you're interested, you could check that video out. And these capacitors have a tendency to fail on the hottest days of the year. So whoever had this problem before, in the comment section of that video, a lot of times they'll write, I already ordered two of these capacitors that are just in my garage now, just in case as a backup. And that's actually a pretty good idea. I will include that in my maintenance tip as well. Since this is the most common AC problem, it's nice to have a backup capacitor ready just in case yours fails when it's the hottest point of the year. And if you need some help looking for those capacitors, I'll add some Amazon links in my description below that you can use as a reference to find the capacitor that you need. And maintenance tip number five is the suction line insulation. The suction line is gonna be the thicker line. You have two refrigeration or Freon lines. One is gonna be a thin one, that's the discharge line, and then the thick one is the suction line. So this suction line will always have insulation, or I should say it should have insulation over it. And with time, this insulation will start to fall apart. See, like I have this bare spot right here. Or if you have pets, some of them love to chew on this stuff and it all kind of gradually disappears. The insulation is there so that the refrigerant or the Freon does not turn into a liquid too fast. And I know I might be getting a little bit technical, but basically, long story short, to extend the life of your compressor on your AC unit, they put this insulation on this thick line. So if your insulation is completely gone, I would get another piece of this foam insulation and put it over this thick pipe right here. And maintenance tip number six is to make sure that your AC condenser unit is leveled. And if it's just slanted a little bit, that's no big deal. But I see some air conditioners that are really sagging to one side. And actually, it's pretty easy to level them. Do keep in mind that you have some copper pipes coming out of your air conditioner unit. So don't move your unit too much because if for some reason you break a joint or kink a line, then you'll have a Freon leak and that opens a whole new can of worms. But you can move this thing a little bit. If your unit is really saggy or slanted to one side, let's say that your pad that it's on is kind of sunk in, you can actually get a shovel and kind of lift it up and then go ahead and throw some rocks underneath there or even like a two by four or some dirt to kind of help level it out. So if let's say that side is sunk in, you can get a shovel, dig this part out a little bit, stick it in there, then crank it up a little bit and throw some stuff underneath this pad to help lift up that side of the unit so it's relatively level. And maintenance tip number seven is pretty simple. And all it is is don't wait for it to be 90 degrees outside before you turn on your air conditioner. So turn on your air conditioner early when it's like 60, 65 degrees outside just to check and see if it actually turns on and runs, everything's cooling good. And the reason for that is pretty simple. If there is something wrong and it's not working, then you actually have some cushion time to get the thing fixed. Whereas if you turn it on when it's 90 degrees outside and it's not working, then you're kind of in a panic, you're in a rush, and you're probably gonna end up paying a lot more than you could have. If it's 60 degrees outside, you can find some good deal online, order to part, you have the time to wait for it to come and to kind of take your time to troubleshoot, diagnose, figure out what's going on and get it fixed before those hot days hit. And maintenance number tip number eight is that over the winter, sometimes as the unit sat there the whole winter, the fan will kind of seize up just a little bit. And a lot of times there'll be nothing wrong with the fan. Um, so the first time, you know, when it turns on, the compressor will turn on, but the fan either will spin really slowly, barely moving at all, or it will just sit there and hum and do nothing. A lot of times, just putting a stick in here or taking a screwdriver and just helping that little fan out, give it a kickstart, is all that is needed to get that fan going. And after that initial time, the fan will start with no problems. 
If that keeps happening to you though, then you do have a problem. Either the capacitor's weak or dead, or there's something wrong with the motor. Okay, so we're done with the first half of the AC maintenance tips, and the second half will be all indoors. The air conditioner is also called an AC split system, and the reason it's called a split system is because there's two units. One is outside, that's the condenser coil we were just looking at, and the other one is inside, it's called the evaporator coil, or the A-coil. And that usually sits on top of the furnace. On an upflow furnace, it'll be above it. Depending on how your furnace is installed, if you have a downflow or a horizontal furnace, the coil might be on the bottom of the furnace or one of the sides. Commonly, it will be on top of the furnace. Now, if you're not sure where your coil is, just find those same refrigeration lines or the Freon lines that you saw outside. You now the thick insulated one and then the thin skinny one and see where they go. So if I trace mine from outside, as you can see, they go into this plenum right here. That's what they call this sheet metal box that sits on top of the furnace and goes in there. And the coil, the reason it's called an A coil sometimes is because it oftentimes looks like the letter A, looks like a radiator. And that just sits on top of the furnace and whenever it collects humidity, water kind of drains down that coil. It has a drain pan on the bottom of it and the water comes out right through here. Yours might be PVC or a hose like mine. And just runs to your floor drain, your sump pump, or whatever you got going. Or maybe even a drain pump. So basically the way that air conditioner works is it's pumping that Freon from outside to inside in a constant loop. It's just going back and forth, back and forth. So maintenance tip number nine is to check temperatures on your air conditioner to make sure it's working correctly. So if you turn on your AC, it turns on, everything's on, seems to be working, and you just want to make sure is it cooling like it should or not. One really easy way to check that is to just use a poke-in thermometer. I have a UEI poke-in thermometer for HVAC, but you can use anything like a stake thermometer or some kind of a poke thermometer that you might have. An easy way to check the temperatures will be in these canvases. Most furnaces in the ductwork, you'll have this black canvas on top of your furnace. Basically, this is my supply. And one in the return duct, right here. This black piece right here, the canvas. And you can just poke your poke in thermometer right in there to measure the temperatures. Take a temperature reading here, and then take a temperature reading in the supply while the unit is running, after you let it run for five, 10 minutes. And what you're looking for there is a 15 to 20 degree temperature difference between your return air temperature and the supply air temperature. I live in Minnesota and it's actually 45 degrees outside right now, so I'm not gonna turn on my air conditioner. But if you actually wanna see how this is done in person, I actually do have a video of where I check the temperatures. If you want, you can look that up later. Another way you can do this is to just find a register somewhere on your main floor or your vent. Stick your thermometer in there, see what the temperature is coming out the vent after the AC has been running for like 10 minutes. Record that temperature and then take a temperature of the ambient air or basically the room temperature you know, in your living room or whatnot, and the difference between the air coming out of the vent and the air temperature in your room should be that 15 to 20 degrees. Now, if you have less than 15, let's say yours is like six to 10, that means you are having a problem. The most common problems are either the A-coil, that radiator looking thing, sometimes with time, if you're not very good at replacing filters or if you have a fiberglass filter, that A-coil will get plugged up with dust and whatever other debris gets by and that restricts the airflow. And that restriction in airflow will also affect the operation of the air conditioner. It won't cool as well. Sometimes that coil can actually start to freeze over as well. And another common problem is that you have a refrigerant leak or a Freon leak. And when you're low on refrigerant, that coil will have the same effect. It can start to freeze or it just simply will not have enough of the coolant to cool down the air in your house. And maintenance tip number 10 is that condensate drain line or the condensate drain fitting. This is another pretty common problem. So as preventive maintenance, what you could do is, see this hose like I have right here? If you have a similar hose or if you have PVC, that makes it a little bit harder. But what you could do is either blow this hose out with compressed air or pour some bleach and water solution down this hose just to clear it out of any gunk that builds up in there. Because these things do get plugged up, these hoses. And if the water has nowhere to go, it'll start to overflow and go over all over your furnace and you're gonna see a puddle underneath of your furnace and that can damage the control board and other furnace components inside. So clean out the hose, make sure the hose is clear. Another thing you could do is take off the hose and then unscrew this fitting. And sometimes the fitting itself inside of here gets plugged up. 
So as preventative maintenance, you can clear the hose and then take this fitting off. Or if you don't want to take it out, you can just either blow backwards through it or stick a wire into it. And once again, I'm not going to do this right now, but I do have a video on this as well. If you want to see me actually do that myself, I have a video of where I take this apart and clean it up so you can see that. I've been mentioning common AC problems quite a bit and other videos that I have. Just so you know, two of my really good videos that I have are top 10 AC problems and top 10 furnace problems. In those two videos, I have a lot of good information. So if you want like a crash course and all the different problems that your AC or furnace can have, those videos are great to watch. So moving on, maintenance tip number 11 is the furnace filter. Even though that sounds like common sense, it actually is one of the most neglected things. I think that was uh, furnace problem number two out of the most common furnace problems. And for AC, that's a pretty frequent problem as well. If this filter gets really dirty, it'll have the same effect as the coil being dirty. So that'll affect the refrigerant pressures or the freon pressures. And your coil can start to freeze up or basically it's not going to keep up with the hot air or it's not going to cool your house enough. These one inch filters should be replaced monthly. As you can see, mine looks pretty clean. But sometimes looks can be deceiving. Just because it looks clean doesn't mean it is clean. I have a video where I check a bunch of filters and kind of prove that point. But this should be replaced about every month. And some people think that, you know, I use my furnace a lot more than I use my air conditioner. Therefore, I don't re need to replace my filter as much. Just so you know, the air conditioning fan speed, that blower motor, is the highest speed. So it runs on a higher speed than your furnace does, meaning it pulls more air through that whole system. And that filter will plug up a little bit faster. And just a quick side note, these filters are directional. You may have noticed that they have an arrow on them that says airflow this way. The arrow is always supposed to be facing the blower motor or towards the furnace. A lot of times for customers, I'll actually draw an arrow pointing towards the furnace as a reminder. As you can see, one side has a chicken wire nut, the other one does not. So this is more as a preventative type of thing. If somebody doesn't replace their filter for a long time, this net will prevent the filter from getting sucked in. I have seen filters get sucked in and wrapped around the motor. Not a pretty sight and to take a long time to get off the motor. So replace your one inch filters every month or at least check them monthly. You know, maybe every, every two months if your house is clean, you don't have a lot of dirt, no pets or anything. And people ask me about the 4 inch filters or the 5 inch filters, those big thick ones. Some of them say that they last up to a year. That's usually not the case. Typically they will not last a year. If you leave them in there for a whole year, your furnace is going to be overheating and your air conditioner is going to be freezing over. Unless you have like a spot clean house with no dust or anything in it. So those 1 year filters, they do not last 1 year. I would replace them at least half a year or every 8 months. And maintenance tip number 12 will require you to take off the furnace doors. So figure out how your doors come off. On my unit, it's an American Standard or a train. I just slide up and pull out. On some of these train furnaces, you have to take the bottom door off first and then the top. Maybe you'll have screws that hold the doors or some knobs. Take those doors off. And maintenance tip number 12 is the blower motor, or more specifically, the blower wheel the fins on that blower wheel, they eventually, with time, get plugged up with dust and other debris. So an easy way to check if your blower wheel is dirty or not. So here's your blower wheel. You got this big metal housing. After you take your bottom door off, make sure the power is off to your furnace. There's a power switch right here. On most furnaces, it'll be on the side of the furnace. Or you can just go ahead and turn off your circuit breaker on the furnace. And then, just reach in on one side of this blower motor housing. Reach in and just kind of feel with your fingers in between those fins. If you feel a lot of dust in there, that means you may need to clean up that blower wheel because that really restricts the airflow. If you have a lot of dust and other stuff, gunk in there, that really messes with the airflow. And I do have a video of where I replaced my blower motor. And in that same video, I took that blower wheel out and I cleaned it up and mine was really filthy. So if you want an example of a really dirty blower wheel, that one was mine. And in that video, you see a bunch of gunk coming out. So if you want to see that, go ahead. And while we're on the topic of the blower wheel, that blower wheel, most of them, unless you have a variable speed one, most of them will have a capacitor, just like the capacitor that you saw in the air conditioner outside. It can be in different locations. 
usually it'll be mounted towards the front, you know, either on the bottom right here or on the side. Sometimes if you're not lucky, it'll be way in the back there. But it has two brown wires going to it. This is just a single capacitor, meaning it's just for the fan, whereas the one outside is for the fan and the compressor. That's why it's called a dual capacitor. But this capacitor is the same as outside. If it's really weak or dead, that blower motor will not turn on. So if you have a meter, as preventative maintenance, you can check your capacitor and make sure that's rated good as well. And make sure the readings are within spec. And these capacitors aren't too expensive, so it would be a good idea as preventative maintenance to just have one of these as backup along with the dual capacitor. So if they do ever go out on you on a really hot day or a really cold day, you can just swap them out with that extra that you have and be good to go. So that's all you have to check on the blower motor. And I do get asked, do we need to oil that blower motor? And the answer is no. Unless you have a really old furnace, you do not need to oil that motor. It comes permanently lubricated, so there's no oil ports where you can oil it. And just a fair warning, some of these doors come off a lot easier than they come back on. And once in a while, I'll get a order to go to somebody's house just to put the furnace doors back on because somebody took them off and they're not able to put them back on. So when you're taking your doors off, do pay attention how they come off so you can put them back together in a similar fashion. And maintenance tip number 13 is to turn off your humidifier if your furnace has one. So as you can see, I have a whole house humidifier right here mounted to my return duct. Here's my control. The control part is easy. You just turn it to off because you don't want your humidifier running during the summer. You have enough humidity as is. That's what your air conditioner is trying to do. It's trying to pull out the humidity. And then all humidifiers will also have a damper. Sometimes the damper will be right next to the humidifier. Other times it'll be on this duct further down. And mine's even labeled. See how it says summer right there and winter right there? Basically, I just want to set it to the summer position. And all this is is a damper. So it opens and closes. So in the summer, I want to close this off so I don't have any air going through here. Maintenance tip number 14 involves your vents or your registers and your returns. As for the vents, you don't want to have too many of them closed. Some people close off like half of the house. That's too many when you close off that many registers or vents that starts to impede the airflow and it can cause various problems with the AC, the refrigeration system, and then the furnace, it can cause your furnace to overheat. So you don't want too many of them closed. The rule of thumb, even though there really is no rule of thumb, is that you don't want to close off more than one third of all your vents. So for example, if you have 21 registers in the whole house, you don't want to turn off more than seven of them. Just so you know, the difference between return grills and the supply vents the supplies, they will always have a shutoff, or they should have a shutoff anyway, that you can turn it off or close that vent. Returns, they usually will not have a shutoff. You cannot turn them off or close them. As preventative maintenance, if your return grill is getting all hairy with dust, you can vacuum it. You can even take it off and just vacuum the backside of that grill, vacuum inside that duct. And also I have seen people put furniture in front of it, like a piano or like a box or a couch. You don't want to have anything in front of those returns because they are sucking air in. If your unit does not have enough return air, that will also cause airflow problems, which in turn will lead to more system problems with the AC or the furnace. So keep all the returns open. Do not put anything in front of them. I have seen people tape them up thinking that they're a vent. They're blowing air out. An easy way to tell is to just take a piece of paper or like a leaf or a string and see if the air is pulling it in or blowing it out and just figure it out that way. And maintenance tip number 15 involves the thermostat. Many thermostats will have batteries in them, and a lot of people aren't aware that their thermostat has batteries. So if you take your thermostat off the wall, a lot of times the thermostat will come off by pulling from the bottom first. Different thermostats come off differently. Uh, sometimes there will be two screws. Other times you have to take one side off and then the other. But anyways, once you take the thermostat off, if your thermostat goes blank, like mine, that means it does not have batteries. It gets power from the furnace, so if there's no power to the furnace, the thermostat will be blank as well. But if your thermostat stays on after you pull it off the wall, that means it does have batteries. A lot of times they're just going to be somewhere in the back. Sometimes they'll be under a cover, you know, like on this side or up here. Sometimes you just swivel them out. Batteries are in there. Either AAA or AA are the most frequent ones. But if the batteries on the thermostat become weak or dead, sometimes weak batteries does not mean that your thermostat will die or the little battery icon will show up. If it's weak, it might be just weak enough where it won't close the switch and your air conditioner won't turn off. So if you haven't replaced your thermostat batteries in a while, you should replace them every, I don't know, three or four years at least to prevent any kind of problems that might arise down the road. 
Also, if you replace your thermostat during the winter, make sure that your thermostat has a jumper in between R and RC. If you have R and RC, sometimes you have only the R terminal and not the RC. It's kind of hard to see behind the wire, but if you see right there that little silver jumper that connects my R to RC, that should be in there. RC is power to cooling. So if you don't have a jumper going from R to RC, your air conditioner will not get powered on. Well guys, and those are the 15 AC maintenance tips that I had for you. I hope you found them useful. If you have any other maintenance tips that you know of that I did not mention in this video, let us know in the comments below to help out everybody else as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out, and we'll see you next time. Still here? So, a friend of mine says, Hey bro, how many people work at your company? And I tell him, hmm, let me think. About half of them. <laughs>